Hey everyone, Rascal here. And Mama, welcome to our podcast. Today we're discussing two movies where man's best friend is the hero of the story. Those movies are The Secret Life of Pets by Illumination Entertainment and Bolt by Disney. Both of these movies are fantastic spotlight films for our furry friends and are so great we just couldn't ignore them. Yeah. And uh, both of these movies are actually really, really good. Bolt was unexpected and Secret Life of Pets we had no idea because that actually just came out uh, last year. Right. So that's uh, the recent movie. So first, Bolt. Mm-hmm. And that's considered a underrated movie. It definitely is. And I was really surprised um, Bruce Willis being Bolt. That was like, it was perfect. I didn't think it was going to work, but it really worked. Mm-hmm. And uh, I didn't even realize that was, uh, that was him because I'm hearing back and I heard uh, some other people. I know Miley Cyrus is in it. Right. And, and she was really people. good. She was really good as the little girl. Very good. What was mm-hmm. her name? Uh, what was her name? Uh, Penny. Penny, yeah. And, and at first, it tried to give you this thing where it's one story and it's another. And uh, little people, Bolt, he's actually in a movie of where he's <laughs> this, this, I guess, genetically engineered dog given right. superpowers. And there's a sort of like a secret agent uh, espionage story to rescue the girl's father in the in the movie. But he's done the role since he was since he was a puppy, so he thinks that he's really a superpowered dog. He has Buzz Lightyear syndrome. Yeah, <laughs> and the whole time, and they have to constantly pull him away when the filming's done because mm-hmm. he really believes he's a super dog and that all this is real. So right. in order to keep the illusion going. They uh, have the dog in the little trailer with her and mm-hmm. act like it's still part of the movie, right. even when they're not filming, so uh, it looks real. Right, so he'll do the same type of performance throughout. And it was so funny that he thought he had this powerful bark and he was doing all these different things and he was, and nothing would happen. Right. <laughs> and then, yeah, and he thought that the girl was kidnapped by the movie's villain and it turned out it was just a little mistake and he got sent all the way to some other city and he's, he thought that he had the power so he thought he was this big shot till he saw that nothing was working right. he had no super bark no super strength <laughs> no laser eyes and zappy eyes nothing but he had a can-do positive attitude right he was cute and he had the, the and then he found his little black cat friend who did her voice uh, I'm not sure. I don't think they really pushed the other actors they did with the one who did Ball and Riley Side. I think they were the two big uh, names that they had to push the movie. Even if you look on the cover of the case, they really had them. But uh, she was hilarious. She was whoever she was. And by the time we have this up, we'll put who it is because we'll finally look it up. But she was hilarious. Right. And they had the little heavy hamster. And then it was Rhino. He was his biggest fan. <laughs> yes. And he was hungry for adventure. He was, a, and he, but he believed he was a superhero too. He knew it was a show, but he still believed he had the powers and everything. It mm-hmm. was hilarious. It was, it was a perfect movie. From beginning to end, there's absolutely nothing I could see being changed about this movie to make it better. The voice casting was perfect. The script was perfect. The plot, the art, everything about this movie was great. And I agree with you 100%. It's underrated. It didn't get as much love as it should have gotten. I don't think it was promoted uh, as well as it should have been. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of times we see these movies like Ant-Man recently where... The ad has it presented as one thing, and then you see the movie. It's like, this movie is great. Why didn't they just tell you this is what the movie was about? Yeah, or maybe they thought however they were going to market it was uh, the best way of what the movie really is. Right. But uh, if you haven't seen Bolt, it's one that you definitely need to see. Mm-hmm. Um, what are some of the best highlights for you? For the Rascal. For, okay, I think... I think the near the beginning, before the whole adventure thing starts, and he's going all around the country to get back to uh, Hollywood, it would be how they set up the movie. If you didn't see the trailer, then you were probably engrossed in the movie's movie. Right. Because you really think, okay, it's going to be this action movie and sci-fi, and it's kind of superhero and espionage, and then you get say, here, cut, and then mm-hmm. that's it. Because for the first, like, probably,
probably almost 10 minutes of the movie is the the film's movie. Right. And then you see them going to the trailer and everything is set. And I know some people probably wanted to see that movie other than this movie, but it's still a good movie. But so. how brilliant would that have been for Disney to make a second movie that was actually the first movie in the movie? That yeah. would have been brilliant. Right. Like, yeah, the sequel would be the TV show done in the format of the movie. Right. Yeah, that actually would have been pretty cool. I know some people were like, I wanted that movie, but <laughs> it was still fun. I love it. And um, for me, I think the two best things about this movie were the relationship between Penny and Bolt. It was really sweet and it was genuine and it was real. So you really liked it. She loved him. He loved her. He loved his girl. And then the second part, as I told you, this this cast of um, strange characters, mm -hmm. and they all work together to as a team. And the only two that really knew each other, of course, were Penny and Bolt. And then, as you said, you had the hamster and the cat and all their strange, weird personalities. They meshed and came together, and they... Save the day. Mm -hmm. And it oh. really became superhero fans. Right. Oh, I can't forget the pigeons. Makes you think of the good feathers. Where it's supposed to be one of them. The leader is supposed to have this big memory. Mm -hmm. And he can't remember who Bolt is. Despite all these signs and posters and advertisements of his show. In front of him or on the side. And you're seeing he said, Bolt! Bolt! It's on a Tuesday. It's at 7 p.m. And all of them he said, no, I don't know you. <laughs> they watch the show and they still don't know who he is. <laughs> oh my gosh. And how long ago was this movie made now? Oh man, uh, 2007 I think? And still we're talking about it. So yes, underrated. Um, should be re-released. Or they should put it on Netflix. Or they should have it for sale more. Or they should do something. It's a great movie. And since we're having this year of all these reboots and remakes and sequels and revivals. Disney is time to do a bolt too. Yeah. Absolutely. With the same voice actors, Miley Cyrus would still work. Even though she's an adult, she still has that same voice. Mm -hmm. She was great as Penny and you should do a bolt too. Yes. Bolt to the rescue. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now we're go to the secret life of pets. By Illumination Entertainment. Mm -hmm. This movie was awesome! Another great movie from beginning to end. Great voice casting. Um, you know who my favorite character was, but we'll wait till we get to that. Mm -hmm. I absolutely love this movie. Now, for this one, the commercials were done perfectly because you were just geared up and ready to see this movie. And exactly what it showed was most of what the movie was about. And right. we had this little surprise side plot right. that just added to the movie. It was great. Mm -hmm. And I know what to expect. I knew it was a comedy. It's pretty much it. Mm -hmm. And we've seen pet movies. But from when we saw the teaser, mm -hmm. and it's supposed to be the tagline is of what the pets do when their owners aren't at home. So mm -hmm. on the teaser, you were seeing all these weird things they would do. They would play with the appliances. They would eat the food in the fridge. They would watch TV. They would play video games. They would do all this and stuff the in the house. And the head-banging poodle to the head-banging yeah. music. Yeah, they would oh listen to music. They would have parties. They would do all this stuff when... Their owners were gone. They wiped their butts on... What did he wipe the his carpet. butt on the carpet? Oh, my gosh. It, was, it right. was hilarious. It was wonderful. It was hilarious. And each of the characters in the movie were distinct and had distinct personalities. And every single character and every single animal in the movie added to the movie. And that's something you don't see a lot in movies where right. every single character made something work. Right. It wasn't just they were in the movie and then they served no purpose and then they were gone and right. then you're asking, why are you in here? There was no point. Right. The only criticism I can see that I saw before the movie came out, mm -hmm. which probably went away after it was released, but, you know, some people still say it. They said it claimed it was a ripoff of Toy Story just by replacing toys with pets. It was, only the difference is, well, they were already alive to begin with, so you can't really call it that. The only thing I see similar is that the two... Two of them, two main characters get lost, and like in the sequel of Toy Story, you know, the other pets gather together to rescue them. That's about the only similarities I can see. Everything else, I am not understanding where the the ripoff uh, mentality is coming from. Uh -huh. In some faraway land, 
I guess, because I don't see it. I <laughs> thought it was great. Yeah, I, I was a little confused. I'm like, wait, this is nothing like Toy Story. It's a whole mm-hmm. different movie. It's about pets, not toys. So there was way more they could do with that. Especially and there wasn't with a kid that owned one dog, and the one dog... Uh, the kid wasn't going away to school, and the dog didn't have to be given to someone else. I mean, there was no, to me, there was no connection. And uh, for those of you who do see it, and who really believe that it is a ripoff of Toy Story, in the comments, explain to us how you see this. Mm-hmm. And maybe get us to understand where you know where the uh, semblances are that we just aren't catching. Mm-hmm. And this also had a... All-star cast. Yes. Two favorite characters. First one, of course, you, you've got a, you've got a name. Uh, Kevin Hart as the darn rabbit. Yes, yeah, Snowball. Oh, my gosh. I could not stop laughing. He was perfect because you saw this little cute rabbit, and he had this crazy psycho voice, and he was crazy psycho. Crazy. Mm. So, it, it was perfect. Yeah, and that's the last one I expect to come out of a rabbit's mouth. You were thinking maybe something cutesy or something like referring to Bugs Bunny, but no, they just went with that. And, and my second favorite character is voiced by Pony Heads voice actress. Jenny Slate. Yeah, It's Chloe, not to, be conf- not to be confused with Chloe the Hedgefox. <laughs> and she was this little, uh, I think she was supposed to be a Pomeranian, I think. Yes. She was like a white puff ball. And... She was hilarious. It was like seeing Ponyhead as a dog. Yes. And she was in love with uh, Max, who's the other main character. Mm-hmm. And it's like everyone could figure it out except the audience somehow. And, and at one point she said, he is, he, said, he is brave and strong and handsome. And some of you, and some of you consider gorgeous. And he said, no one says that. Shut up! <laughs> <laughs> But it was just hilarious how yes. everything came together, how the plot goes. We don't want to reveal too much because you really have to watch it on your own. No spoilers mm-hmm. or anything here. Because it's just a fun comedy, a great animation, yeah. adventure is fun. And as you said, the side plot with the other pets right. going to rescue them and how they all work together and all these different animals and they even have their own little moments where it's a little sad Mm -hmm. but it doesn't last too long it doesn't bring you down completely right it's just pretty much laughter almost laughter side splitting hilarious laughter from beginning to end tell us a little more about illumination entertainment some other great movies they've made now they've only made a couple more movies they seem to be fairly new despite the uh criticism they've had the despicable me trilogy uh, Which had... I think is great. Even mm-hmm. the third one, it wasn't what I expected, but once we watched it, it was good. Yeah, it, it was still fun. Mm-hmm. Um, they have Sing that came out a uh, year before last. Which was awesome, despite yeah. a lot of criticism yeah. I've heard. And I, I love it. I, I believe, I think it's because it's a kind of generic story with the music competition and everyone competing and they all got their own issues. and so I think but that's probably why. But some of the greatest scripts and, are taking... A generic idea and putting a new spin on it, which is exactly what this company did, which is what made this movie work right. and what made it great. It made it, it was humorous, touching, action, drama, uh, all within this one same movie mm-hmm. with some great voice actors. So I loved it. And uh, what was the other movie? Oh, and then the spin off to Despicable Me. Besides, uh, they had Hop, which is an Easter movie that they had, like, a hybrid of live action and CGI. With James Marsden. Yeah, yeah. Uh, years ago. And, um, the um, Minions. James Marsden as the human. And then the rabbit was um, Russell Brand. Russell Brand, yeah. yes. And then uh, the, there was a spinoff to Despicable Me where they had Minions, which showed the backs of how they became uh, Gru's Minions. That's probably the least like, because it's hard to watch, see see something about the movie and people aren't just saying they hate the movie and it was so annoying. I didn't think it was really bad, honestly. It had some weird moments. There was a little bit overload of the minions, but they still tried to make it work and not just annoy you. But that's just me. I think there were some great moments. I think the plot was hilarious. I love the villain. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, that she wanted to be queen, and then she tricked them to help them be the queen. They had to get it back. But I think probably for a lot of people, it was minion overkill. It was probably. just minion overkill, and there wasn't a breakup with Gru or other characters you knew. Now, that being said, um, 
Sandra Bullock was great as the villain. She was as great as the villain as Kristen Wiig was as Gru's uh, uh, new wife. Yeah. She was as, they were equally dynamic on each end of the spectrum. I thought Sandra Bullock was awesome. But I have to say, I did not like the Minion movie as much as I like the Despicable but, Me right. trilogy. They were putting some effort into it. There were some weird parts of it, like, okay. Mm -hmm. But uh, they had some good ideas, oh, good definitely. concepts. You still enjoy seeing them for the most part. They mm -hmm. had a villain con, which was really creative. Instead right. of a hero con, a villain con. Right. And, and I'm was, still waiting for someone to copy that. Yeah, make that a movie or a convention or something. A, yeah. a real life convention. Yeah, that, that. that. And uh, they did uh, their best to do something different because they couldn't mm -hmm. have the other characters besides grew as you saw at some point in the movie because it was a prequel right this is how they met him right. so it's understandable why no one else was in it but right. they could have tried a little bit of something else so it wouldn't be so much of them i think for me what probably would have made the movie um a little more palatable um in terms of so much minion is it being shorter that Maybe. would have made it for me, I Maybe think I would have done a, it. a little slightly over an hour, and then that's exactly. it. Exactly. That would have been it. And maybe instead of um, a theater release, a DVD release. Yeah. And then that would have worked. I don't do that anymore now. It's because they got streaming. But, right. yeah. I think one of the best parts I liked was we got to see more of different minions than the, the ones like Bob and the ones we're really familiar with and just seeing how varied the personalities are, mm -hmm. how loony and crazy they were. That part I did love because we got to just learn about so many more minions and um, just some of the crazy things they could do and the brilliant ideas they had that is in at first glance looked like they were going to be kind of silly or stupid, but they ended up working out brilliantly. That part about the movie, I really, really did love. Yeah, that, that I meant they fleshed them out. Mm -hmm. Even though there were like a billion copies of them, they focused <laughs> on three that would stand out and they could flesh out, even though if you couldn't understand what the heck they were saying half the movie. But you still got to see some <laughs> other background ones. They didn't name them anything, but it was still interesting to see how many more crazy characters and personalities they were in the movie. Right. Okay, so both of these movies are fantastic. Uh, Secret Life of Pets and Bolt. Both are should be are underrated because they're just fantastic movies, and they actually were supposed to be part of Rascal Superhero Month, but through two unfortunate events that occurred, we were not able to record it in time. So this is actually our late send off right. for Superhero Month. So thank you for joining us, and if you did um, experience the wonderfulness of Rascal Superhero Month, thank you, thank you, thank you, and for those of you like myself who made a couple videos in honor of her superhero month. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It was fun. It was awesome. Great shout outs to Lavender Rose, Bennett Dudley, and Looney Cat. And I think Sylveon also made one at the end. Yes. So thank you guys. Thank you, Mama, for participating <laughs> in my own weird way. And thank each and every one of you who watched all of our videos and made Superhero Month so much fun that we can't wait for uh, part three that she's going to air in 2019. Yeah. So, I'm Ask Entertainment. And I'm Mom Entertainment. Have a fantastic day. Peace. Rivers and streams, plucking sunlight from the sky in my pocket.